We will start, Paul, with Tom Dowd, BrooklynNets.com. Hey, Paul, welcome to Brooklyn. Thank you. Can you walk us through uh, just the free agent experience and uh, what kind of made you feel like uh, this was the place for you right now? Yeah, I'm, I don't think I have the time to walk through the whole process, but <laughs> it was it was a tough and long process for me. Um, a lot of factors weighed into my decision. Um, you know, being a part of this organization of, you know, Brooklyn and the team that's, you know, that's around. I mean, it was it was a decision that I made, you know, based off of, you know, winning now and, and trying to win a championship this year. And um, I feel like, you know, with the pieces that we have, you know, it's definitely possible. Alex Schiffer, The Athletic. Paul, going off the, the tough free agency decision, was there anyone you heard from here as like a lead recruiter of sorts for you? And where do you think you can help these, this team the most? Yeah, um, you know, Sean Marks was was big and, you know, Steve Nash and um, those guys were huge, you know, and they made me feel comfortable and um, they had a big impact on that, you know, and, and, and knowing some of the other guys that are in the locker room and um, their talent and, you know, their their attitudes um, definitely made the decision a little bit easier. Brian Lewis, New York Post. Hey, Paul. Welcome to New York. Uh, I'm just curious, Was uh, is it fair to describe the process? You said you can't walk us through the whole process. Is it fair to describe the process as there were other possible opportunities on the table, but they just didn't present the same chance for you to win and play a big role on a winner? Is that a fair assessment? That's fair. That's fair. You know, yeah, there's was, there was options out there, you know, but um, none I felt felt fitted you know, what I wanted to do and what I wanted to accomplish um, and just the big picture of things um, and just having a, a coach at Steve Nash and, you know, having players, you know, like we have in the locker room. Um, I felt like it met every criteria that I was looking for. Greg Logan, Newsday. You've been a star player through your career. Kenny Atkinson, when he was here, used to rave about you. And uh, I'm just wondering at this stage, how do you view yourself uh, especially in terms of playing a role on such a deep cast as as this team has. Yeah, I mean, as a player, I still see myself as a <laughs> really good player. <laughs> you know, I'm not going to take that any, take any of that away from myself. But um, I think you know, when you get older, you learn um, what what a team or, or a real team is about and what your role is on that team. Um, this team is not going to need me to get out there and, and, and just go to work on a block and, <laughs> you know, score 15, 20 points. I understand that. So knowing my role on this team is, is going to be big and crucial. And everybody knowing their role on the team is going to be crucial to winning. Brian Mahoney, Associated Press. Hey, Paul. Um, obviously, the last two seasons were pretty tough with the virus and the protocols and stuff like that. Um, do you feel like we're close to being able to have a normal season? Do you worry that there's still going to be a lot of problems or, or, you know, where do you feel about all that right now? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to stay optimistic about the whole situation. Um, these last two seasons, you know, wasn't optimal or um, for us, it still was a success. You know, we're still able to get out there and play basketball and, and give the fans something to look at. And, um, but, you know, hopefully going forward, you know, we figure out everything that's going on you know, to have, you know, our fans at full capacity and not go through all the, the things that they have to go through to watch watch us play basketball. So I'm going to stay optimistic about it and hope, you know, that, you know, tomorrow is better. Next question is on Zoom. Christian Winfield, New York Daily News. Hey, Paul, how's it going? Welcome to Brooklyn. All right, thank you. No problem. Um, I asked Blake this question as well because he spent a good chunk of his career out West, as did you. You played in Utah and, and you played in, in well Denver not too long ago. Um, obviously, that means you played against Patty uh, several times over the course of your career. So I'm, I'm just wondering what it was like, A, playing against him and battling against him, and B, what you're expecting to get from him uh, as teammates now. Well, yeah, you know, first I'm going to say, you know, he's he's an established player in this league. Um, and, you know, playing against him in the West, on those San Antonio teams, you, you had the first unit, and then you had, you know, that second unit, which is their European you know, unit. And, he led that. They led that second unit, and you know when that when he got on the court, those teams were a problem. And um, the way that he shares the ball, moves the basketball, moves himself, um, gets to open spots. You know he plays the game the right way, and I think that causes a lot of problems for opponent teams. Well, so it's, it's great to have you know somebody with his basketball knowledge and IQ on on your team. We'll say on Zoom, Chris Mulholland, Nets Daily. 
Hey, what's up, Paul? Welcome to Brooklyn. I'm just curious, considering your experience out in the Western Conference, what was it like now being under Steve Nash as your head coach and kind of learning under him throughout this whole year? Yeah, I mean, it's it's a great opportunity. Um, I'm fortunate and grateful for the opportunity. Um, but, you know, through time, we'll tell. You know, I'm still trying to figure out, should I call him Steve or Coach Steve or Coach Nash or whatever it is. But um, through time, you know, we'll, we'll continue to work on our relationship and, um, I, I'll, I'll see what he wants from me and how I can be effective and fit into his plans. Anybody else in the room for Paul? We'll go into the back corner. Bob Windrum. That's Haley. Paul, when you when you were looking at the Nets, um, how important was the performance team, the strength team? Those type of aspects of, of the team for an older player like you, how important? Yeah, it was very important. You know, um, I didn't mention that, but that's, that was really important, you know, to have a, you know, world-class organization at the top and, you know, world-class performance team and um, world-class catering and, and chefs and all that type of stuff matters. You know, especially when you get older, you understand that a little bit more and, you know, it, it plays a big part of, of the decision making. So all that combined, you know, is really, you know, part of the big decision. On to Lee, Tencent. Yeah. Hi, Paul. Welcome to Brooklyn. Thank you. And I moved here from Denver last month. And also I want to ask, uh, when did you come here and what type of connection did you make uh, with the teammates during the offseason after signing the, the contract? Yeah. Um, I got here few days ago. Um, it's been a task to try to find somewhere to, to stay, you know, but um, the organization, you know, teammates, everybody's, you know, making it a little bit easier. Um, I spoke with Kevin, you know, after, you know, the decision and, you know, he's ready to go and I'm ready to go and the team's ready to go. So I'm ready to get it. James Herbert, CBS Sports. Hey, Paul. Um, I know we don't know exactly what the starting lineup is necessarily going to look like, but when you talk about that second unit, that bench, what do you see as a sort of identity of that group? And just what do you think about the depth of this team now? Yeah. I mean, at this point, I don't, I don't know. You know, I don't know. Um, I think something, it's what training camp is for, you know, to figure out all those ins and outs and, you know, what unit is what. And but at the end of the day, we all have to learn to play with each other and uh, we all have to learn how to gel and mesh together. So, um, we'll, we'll wait to turn in camp to try to figure out all that and um, try to enjoy that process. Antoine Banchero, L'Equipe. For among the six players on this roster who were in last year's players roster, several of them have talked about unfinished business. How, as new players, do you guys buy into that mentality? Um, you know, it's, it's good words to use, um, unfinished, you know, um, I think you continue to work at it. You 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 build off of, you know, that. Um, whatever the situations were last year, you build off of that. And, you know, me being a new guy trying to come in and, and help, you know, build off of that, you know, I'm I'm excited about it because I mean there's there's a lot to learn. There's a lot to do. Um and there is unfinished business and you know, I want to be a part of helping, you know, finish that business. Like Scotto, hoops hype. Hey, Paul, good to see you. Um, just curious, you know, you've had a lot of personal accolades. Obviously, you're trying to win that first championship. I mean, for you, uh, I'm just curious how much longer for you individually you want to continue playing at this point. Like, is getting a championship the last thing you want to cross off your co uh, your career list at this point? Yeah, I mean, I don't know. You know, I think um, for me, I set out early in my career is to play this game to the best that I can play it. And um, I feel great. You know, having a a, a real off season to prepare and train and get re get better and get ready for the season, um, than opposed to these last two, you know, it's definitely helped the situation. So, um, who knows what, how, what that is, man? Um, as long as I feel great and as long as I'm productive and I'm helping the team, um, I'm gonna play this game. That's it. Thank you, Paul. Thank you.